kinetics, thermodynamics, and energy diagrams. Kinetics refers to the pathway and speed of a reaction. Thermodynamics just refers to delta G, right? If it is negative, then it's a spontaneous reaction. If it is positive, it is non-spontaneous. Energy diagrams are the way we can represent all of this. So an energy diagram, also known as a reaction coordinate diagram. Delta G will be on your y-axis. Your x-axis will be reaction coordinate. Again, think of reaction coordinate as the progress of the reaction. So imagine your reaction coordinate diagram looks like this. So, what can we say? Your reactants live here, your products live here. Because there are two humps in the middle, in the valley, that's where your intermediate lives. And then you've got a transition state at each hump, delta dagger 1 and delta dag or double dagger 2. So, kinetics. What can you tell about kinetics from the graph? We can tell the activation energy. That's the hump you have to get over to get to the transition state. Think of that as the amount of energy needed to break bonds. So that's the activation energy of the first step. And here's the activation energy of the second step. So just looking at this graph, we can see the activation energy of the second step is greater. Step two is going to be our rate limiting step. So how do we know the step with the greater activation energy is the rate determining step? Right, because we've got a rate law, R equals K, a rate constant, times the concentration of a reactant. That's a first order rate law. Or we could have R equals K times the concentration of X squared or R equals K times the concentration of X times the concentration of Y. These are both second order rate laws. But you're going, what does activation energy have to do with these rate laws? Activation energy is actually hidden in the K. Where K equals A E to the negative E A over R T. A is a pre-exponential factor that has to do with the collision frequency and how complicated the reactant molecules are. E is the exponential base. Ea is the activation energy. R is the gas constant and T is temperature. So the larger your activation energy is, the smaller K is. And the larger your temperature is, the greater K is. In other words, reactions proceed faster at higher temperature. And that's just because the molecules are moving faster, so there's more collisions per second. And a greater fraction of collisions is energetic enough to get over the activation barrier. I'm sure you remember all this from your second semester general chemistry course. 
Let's talk about the transition state. Symbolized by a double dagger. And it's the state that we have, remember, at the hump on one of these energy diagrams. So, in a chemical reaction, bonds on the reactant side are breaking, bonds on the product side are forming. The transition state represents a step in the pathway that's midway, approximately midway, between the bonds that are going to break being broken and the bonds that are going to be formed being formed. You can think of it as breaking bonds are halfway broken and forming bonds are halfway formed. Now let's talk about the transition state. It's what you see at the hump of each step in a reaction. And it's sort of midway between reactants and products. So in a chemical reaction, bonds on the reactant side will break. In the transition state, those bonds are in the process of breaking. But a chemical reaction usually also involves the process of bonds forming. So bonds on the product side are the ones that are formed, and they'll be in the process of forming in the transition state. So you can think of it as approximately midway between reactants and products. So this reaction coordinate diagram actually works for this chemical reaction, where I have a hydroxide ion attacking this isopropyl bromide molecule and replacing the bromide to give you isopropanol and bromide ion. We'll get to this in the next section, but a lone pair on hydroxide becomes a sigma bond with carbon. That's called nucleophilic attack. The sigma bond between carbon and bromine breaks and becomes a lone pair on the bromide ion. That's called loss of a leaving group. What does the transition state look like? And this is what we think the transition state looks like. The dashed blue line represents the bond that is in the process of forming between the carbon and the oxygen. The dashed red line represents the bond that is in the process of breaking between the carbon and the bromine. They're dashed because they're not all there. The hydroxyl group is negative in reactants and neutral in products, so it's got a partial negative charge. The bromide is negative in products and neutral in reactants, so it's got a partial negative charge as well. And it's also no accident that I've drawn the CO bond longer than the CBR bond. That's because of the Hammond postulate. That says that the closer two points are on this curve, the more alike they are structurally. In this case, since it's an exothermic reaction, the transition state is closer to the reactants than it is to the products. So it should look more like the reactants. In other words, the CBR bond should be less broken and the OH bond should be less formed. What if your reaction takes place in more than one step? Consider this overall reaction. We have isopropanol and we react it with hydrobromic acid to get isopropyl bromide and water. I was missing that CH3 group. I fixed it. This actually happens by two steps. Step one is proton transfer. The lone pair on the alcohol acts as a base takes a proton from the hydrobromic acid. The result of step one is this protonated isopropanol, where now we have H2O+, plus, which is a good leaving group, and a bromide ion, which is a strong nucleophile. In our second step, the bromide ion is going to perform nucleophilic attack on the alpha carbon, and the water is going to leave. in the process creating 
isopropyl bromide, and water. So we have a two-step reaction coordinate. I think the height of the first transition state will be lower than the height of the second, just because the bond we're breaking, the CO bond in the second, is probably stronger than the HBr bond. What's here in the valley? The intermediates, the protonated alcohol and the bromide ion. Here's your first transition state. The OH bond is forming, the HBr bond is breaking, because the intermediates have a positive on oxygen and a negative on bromine, and those are neutral in the reactants, we've got a delta plus on oxygen and a delta minus on bromine in the transition state. And here's your second transition state. You can see the CO bond is breaking and the CBr bond is forming. Actually, I just have to state a correction. The HBr bond is pretty strong. So the two heights, the two activation energies should be closer to equal. Probably more like that. But otherwise, I think we did a pretty good job.